<laughs> okay, I'm so happy to be able to introduce and present as part of the 10th annual Creative Strings Workshop um, a friend of mine and a, an amazing fiddler who is respected by so many people that that I know and respect. I mean, people look up to this guy just all around the world. He's one of the top Cajun fiddle, fiddle players anywhere. He's an amazing person. He's just a, got so much knowledge, so much wisdom. Um, we're really appreciative that Michael Doucet is willing to, to share with us this evening. So uh, here's, here's Michael. What a humbling situation. Anyway, how y'all doing? Good? Great, great. Yeah. Well, this is the non-intellectual part of this fiddle thing. It's been amazing. Uh, we so far, and uh, this one you don't even have to think. You don't have to just kind of let your mind just go. Go back about 200 years in a little place in southwest Louisiana um, where this music was created. Uh, this is French music, and it's called Cajun music for, for lack of a better term. It involved um, French settlers who came to the New World in 1604, uh, yeah, three years before Jamestown. And they settled apart what they call Acadie, it's the word Acadians, which is now Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Maine. And they lived there among the Micmac Indians uh, to survive. And they did, and they prospered for like 150 years. But of course, the English and the French are like oil and water. They don't get along very well, so there were always wars, et cetera, et cetera. So eventually, the English um, decided that the Acadians had the best land. That was familiar. So it was a, it was a terrible uh, diaspora that happened back in 1755. And they basically deported 12,000 Acadians, and they sent them all along the, the seaboard to the 13 colonies. And, my relatives actually were sent back to France. It must have been really bad. That's what I said. But um, and eventually found their way to Louisiana. Now Louisiana was was an anomaly, um, you know, in the late 1700s or mid 1700s because it went between Spanish and English, and then it went Spanish and French, and then it was bought by the United States in 1812. Well, just going back and forth, we have a lot of Spanish words. We have a lot of Spanish influence. We have a lot of French influence, and then you have the word Creole. So I'll, I'll play all these different kind of tunes for you tonight to get an idea of how different everything is. The Acadians actually were given, the first Acadians were given Spanish land grants, not along the Mississippi, which were a lot of plantations, a lot of people were given land grants in the old days to settle the country. They were given this godforsaken land across the Chapelite Basin. Chapelite Basin is a swamp, it's about 26 plus miles wide. So it was um, it was kind of different, but it was definitely isolated. And it kept its people isolated. Therefore, we still speak French. I grew up speaking French. It was like no big deal. Uh, the music, everybody played music. I mean, from, you know, from old time French songs, fiddle music, singing ballads. I had uh, three aunts who sang ballads, you know, French ballads, and always tell us stories. And then, you know, then we heard rock and roll. And you had people among us that, um, you know, that wrote great rock and roll, a guy by the name of Bobby Charles. You might have heard of him. He wrote a song called See you Later Alligator. He lived like down the street. So, and that was like New Orleans music. So, our music, what we grew up hearing, was basically, you know, old time French music, which I'll play. But you also heard a lot of blues. You heard New Orleans jazz, you know, and which was the street music, basically. Um, and you heard swing. You know, and whatever, whatever was there. Um, when I was growing up, I was just immersed in this. I loved this music, and uh, but you know, it was like any other kind of music. It was like no big deal. I thought everybody knew about this. But we were a culture, a small culture in Southwest Louisiana. We have actually we have uh, parishes, civil parishes. We don't have counties still in the French realm, and we were put down for speaking French. For playing this kind of music, nobody could understand, and also, you know, for the food we eat, <laughs> that's changed a whole lot since then. Uh, so basically, what I saw when, when I was a senior in high school, that you know, uh, the old times, when the old times, we also call this old people's music, by the way, this is funny, but we never called it Cajun music, because I call it Native American music, Indian music. 
it just but that's that's Americanization or anything like that. We call it the music project. And anyway, the um, I saw it when, when when the elders were dying, so were the stories, so were the songs, and of course, so were the music. So uh, it's funny. I took a course um, with LSU, which is Louisiana State University, Baton Rouge, and just took a simple course. It was folklore, you know. It was uh, we studied a book written by Roger Abrams, Abrams and uh, George Falls, and it was called Anglo Saxon Folk Songs. Okay, let's do this. So anyway, this was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, the capital of Louisiana. We were studying child ballads, Celtic music, music blues, Native Americans. Now, one word about French music. So of course, raise my hand. So, what about French music? Oh, that's just translated English songs. Oh, really? So that prompted me to do research, and from that, you know, of course, I wrote a paper, and we became friends after that. But no, there was no research done. So that was what I did. I did a lot of research in this music, uh, trying to find the origins of it because it's, it's it orients with the blues. There's so much blues in it, but where did the blues come from? You know, and. Uh, so that's what I did. Basically, learned from from writing first hands with these old timers, and it wasn't like, oh, this is how you play it. You know, they just played the songs. You just played with them. Everybody had their own style. So I got to learn from, you know, some gentlemen and women who were born around the turn of the century or before. So some of it's really old music. Some of it's new music. Of course, this music has taken. You know, you hear there's a there's a commercial version of this. You know, everybody said somebody sitting at the table today says, "Well, all I knew was Doug Kershaw." Doug Kershaw is an amazing musician. I mean, you know, he might tear hairs and do his thing and jump up and down, but I mean, he, he comes from that area, and uh, I think he really influenced Mark O'Connor. I think that's what Mark told me one time. So you have you go all the way from this old antiquated stuff. To like Nashville stuff, you hear a lot of like Hank Williams used a lot of Cajun licks and whatever his fiddle players were, etc. Um, but I was interested in preserving this. I worked a lot in the schools, uh, was awarded grants, and uh, luckily, and uh, you know, bring this music to the school with some great musicians like the late Dewey Balfour, etc. And uh, there's Mark Southwell who, who makes accordions, and uh, so I was really adamant about preserving this music so that. The, Future generations could. When I was growing up, in fact, I, I learned I had a how I learned how to play Cape Late. I had an uncle we called him T. Will. He was a guy my parents told me not to hang around with because he had a racetrack. Now this is not a circular racetrack. If you think this is a quarter horse racetrack, which people just run quarter horses a quarter of a mile. Well, that was what was happening. And he also played fiddle. He showed me three songs I remember: Jolie Blonde, Alonzo Lafayette, and Saint Louis Blues, which I thought. Was a Cajun song, and but that's just how things were. So um, you know, from that, and then it evolved, and then you know, I got a group together called Beau Soleil, and it was um, a lot of good friends, and we brought the music to the world. And then we decided this is really American music or North American music, so why not bring it to the states? So we we're lucky enough to play in every state of the union over three times. And now, like when I was growing up in the late '60s, maybe. I can think of maybe three fiddle players my age. I mean, it just reduced to that. It was just nobody playing, you know. And so now it's amazing. I mean, there's you know, there's fiddle camps, there's uh, Cajun fiddle camps, etc. There's probably a Cajun group in every state, you know, almost every country because we played a lot in Europe before. Um, you know, we really played in the states. So anyway, so that's a long story. So anyway, blah blah. And any questions? If you have any questions, please feel free to answer. So I'll play a couple of songs from a uh, great old time by the name of Dennis McGee. Not exactly a Cajun name, but he never spoke English to me. Dennis is one of those guys who recorded back in the 20s. Um, he started recording uh, Cajun music or ethnic music back in the 20s, thanks to RCA Victor, who was trying to sell everybody Victrolas with that way to sell Victrolas and made, you know, 78 record. So this is when he called, it's kind of a, a different rhythm, it's called Happy One Step. We're happy people, by the way. You know.
which um, kind of the closest in Europe is like from the Shetland Islands, the way they had two fiddle players. Uh, this was the music that was carried over, and there was even some French writers who came to Louisiana in the, uh, in the early 1800s who heard two fiddle players and thought, well, that's the same kind of music they play in Europe. I doubt it, but anyway. Um, so the second, you know, you had, you had the, usually a second musician would just, or the second fiddler would either do EAEA, -E kind of like a squirted tour. It's got a no. a lot with the Spanish world, which was Cuba, et cetera, like that. So you have some Spanish, I could play a couple of Spanish songs later. But I want to show you, that's like a one step. So this is a waltz. And it's like everybody plays waltzes, where it's kind of a, this is kind of like a sleazy waltz. Somebody was talking about it today about sliding. You know, it's called slip sliding. We call it like a bayou slipperies or something like that. This is called shabby rules, which means pretty little red cheeks.
Nobody plays a, we can, I need to write a song like that. I compose every now and then, if you call it a composition. But a rhythm, I like to do rhythms, and rhythms that you, uh, that, that I like. It's kind of like, uh, you know, just like, oh no. This next song, I simply call this newsreel. I guess I could tell this story. I had a friend of mine called me up to do a, something for a t TV station. And they, uh, while I was there, the producer says, we need something for our news. I said, okay, but we don't want it danceable. I said, well, why do you ask me, <laughs> you know? So I said, okay, so I came up with this kind of riff. And this is, uh, it's just simply, uh, uh, with, like the dinner song, this is an old kind of song, you hear that rhythm. So I just worked with a simple rhythm and basically um, an A arpeggio. So Colonies. 
So this is a song, same kind of, this is a French, old French song. And, but it was, I found it in the Seychelles Islands and it's just a perfect, as a bourrée, but it's a perfect Cajun song. So I kind of introduced this song and simply called this uh, Chez Seychelles by the seashore. <laughs> so it's got one little rhythm in it. It's really nice and good to go to the floor. It's indeed so good. <laughs> Thank you. 
know, at least a thousand tunes like this. For somebody that's just starting out with some of these songs, is there any sort of like type of uh, book you'd recommend, or like if I want to start learning these songs, where, where do I start? There are a bunch of books. You know, I mean, people try to transcri transcribe it. One guy by the name of Craig Duncan, perhaps you know, he's a great fiddle player from Nashville. He took a lot of tunes. He does credit for me, <laughs> just a little bit. But um, and I've done some stuff on Homespun. Uh, that you know, the, you know how to play this a bunch of the CDs like you know for everything you want to know about a two step everything you want to know about a waltz and then you know a repertoire and things like that that's on homespun tapes that's pretty good um, I think people are doing their own kind of thing I, I find that more and more um, there's some books about words you know music books um, just called Cajun music basically um, uh, but that's hard to find it's mostly like listening and and you get you get into it and you get what what I just got because that means the vast things say Cajun music can anything. I mean, you know, um, I can't ever remember his name, but he was like, a, you know, this Nashville fiddle player, and so he had a song called Cajun. You know, so this is how it sounds, you know.
How did amplification change? change That's a really good question. I like with, with the, there was a question about how they do that. And there were a lot of swing bands in Louisiana. You got to understand when they when they, that's one thing I didn't say when they closed Storyville, <laughs> Navy. You know what can I say? Syphilis. Ah, closed Storyville. It was an awful thing. A lot of those jazz musicians moved to Southwest Louisiana. Not all of them went up like Louis Armstrong. You said Bunk Johnson moved to the Bayous in Southwest Louisiana. Bunk Johnson was a great trumpet player who taught Louis Armstrong how to hold the trumpet. So said uh, Lorenzo Tio played. Anyway. When they closed the door, a lot of musicians didn't move up north. They moved to the south, southwest Louisiana. And so they had these bands. And it was great. It was usually trumpet, maybe trombone, clarinet, fiddle. They all had fiddle. A friend of mine did a book of Austin. You can look at Austin Sony, a book on all these Creole groups that would play throughout southwest Louisiana. All of them had a violin. And they all, if this is like 1916 to probably maybe the 30s. And nothing worked. Nobody played anymore. It was amazing. And so I, I got to find one guy who did that guy by the name of Bradford Gordon. And he could hardly play, but he, you know, he played kind of like a new, like a. I mean, it just had like a crazy, like old time New Orleans sound. So that was, that was kind of Mr. What was your question? How did amplification? <laughs> <laughs> okay, amplification. Okay. So because of that, see, after that, there was no amplification. So what people used to do, they brought trucks or cars and connected the, the amplification to the battery of the car. So if you had a Model A and you had a fiddle, you had a group. Because most of this music, that's a good question, most of this music is house music. It's like not for general public, it's just for house because it's, it was this closed society and it's just for the neighborhood. So when you have dance halls, like I said, Harry Schultz who played like country and west, country songs, swing songs, all of a sudden you could hear it all over. So is so that influenced that because all of a sudden what happened to the fiddle? You'd have to amplify the fiddle. Everything was from a microphone. Then the introduction of this instrument called the accordion. Now it's not a piano card, it's a diatonic accordion, a melodeon, just like harmonica. When that was introduced, it's much louder than the fiddle. So then the fiddle took second fiddle phase. So all the songs that were in F or B flat or minor songs were forgotten. So it's all these old time fiddle players who kind of retain that. So that changed because they made, made it more popular. Now when I was growing up, I was, as I said, you, we'd have parties and have trombones or pianos and fiddles. And, you know, it didn't matter what you played and what you sang. It was, everybody got together. But then we, when we first got television, and I'm from Lafayette Parish, Louisiana, which is about 1958, um, they had, it was the first MTV show, they had a Cajun dance on, it was called Pass Pas Two. And they had a Cajun band in. I'd never seen this before because it was twin fiddles, steel guitar, bass, drums, and electric guitar. I mean, that was like a big band. So that changed the music too. So then our music became you know, this kind of like a swing band, almost like a Bob Wills kind of thing, but playing French music. So that changed that too. And I think the subtleties, if, 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 if I'm going to answer that question correctly, I think the subtleties of, of fiddle playing in, in Louisiana kind of was lost because of the amplification which now is different, because we had horrible, I mean, I remember it was like horrible things you had to put on your fiddle to be heard or really recorded. So it changed a lot in how you played. And I think the styles changed too. But it was all about the same time. So it's not one didn't do one to the other, but everything at the same time. And just become American, you know? I mean, you, you gotta understand, we grew up with people, the old people, when people would speak English, they'd say, man, he's a pilot man again. He speaks American, not he speaks English, but he speaks American. So it was a whole different philosophy, you know? And so that was kept among us, and then, you know, everything changed. So I don't know if that answers your question, yeah. but it sort of did. I mean, you had groups that played, but I mean, um, amplification probably got it out to more people and got more people popular, you know? But that was amazing, the, the stories about a truck, you know, Model A connecting to a generator to be able to amplify a dance. Good question. I have another one. If no one. Uh, can you explain to me something I've, I've never understood? What's the difference between Cajun music and Zydeco? How how is that different? Well, let me see. We got another half hour. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> basically, it's black and white. What do you call Cajun? It's corrupting one of Cajun. So it's basically the French music in Southwest Louisiana. Zydeco, les Zydeco sont pas salés is a Creole term, of, and it's like, it's a, it's, it was an underground term, let's have a party, the snap beans aren't salty. So that's mostly African based. Now, because we, we don't, in Louisiana, you know, it's like Creoles are mixed. 
is when, as, as, a, as, a, as a people. The Creoles who came, the original word Creole said, you come from Europe and you go into the New World. You were Creole. Okay, you had workers or slaves or whatever. Those were Creoles, became Creole. Then it became, the cooking became Creole because they cooked which became Creole cooking. And at the same time, these people were free people of color. A lot of people, there, there were free people of color who had plantations in, in, in Southwest Louisiana. Louisiana is a completely different place. It was one of the only places in the South where slaves were allowed to congregate. Not only slaves, but people who worked uh, in, in, in homes or something like that. That's what's called Congo Square. Of course, Louis Armstrong and all the herb, this kind of stuff. It was a place where you could actually make music on a Sunday afternoon. The, um, so Creole developed into what we call Zydeco, and, and both Cajun or Acadian music and Zydeco music is a rural music. So in other words, that happened across the Mississippi in southwest Louisiana, the middle of the state, if you look at Louisiana, mm -hmm. in those parishes there. You have a Creole, and, and I've only spoken Creole, which is a mixture of African and French. Now both black and whites speak Creole. Creole is also spoken in Haiti, Martinique, Guadalupe, and the Seychelles. <laughs> and one parish in southwest Louisiana. So what happened is that you live side by side you know, whatever, who has ever settled it. And you gotta understand this is an um, agricultural state in those days. I mean, in other words, you were, color did really matter because you, survival matter. Louisiana is a hard place, maybe as far as Michigan, I don't know, but I mean, it's, it's hard, but you can do it. And you can, and, and basically you were a man of your words for whoever you were, that was who you were. So there was cultures that grew up side by side, these Creole cultures, French Creoles, in Southwest Louisiana amongst the Acadians. But Creole music is like, uh, it's more like a holler song or something like that. It's more bluesy. I'll play you a couple of songs just real quick with that, with, uh, with that kind of style. It's, it's very choppy or, or, or different. It's more syncopated. Um, and what's, what's amazing about it, it's side by side with the Acadians. Now, I knew this, and of course, you know, anywhere you go, you're going to find prejudice. It doesn't matter. That's the, that's the state of affairs. So when I was growing up, you know, everybody in, was talking about this blind, half-blind uh, accordion player by the name of Ari Lejeune, who played these songs, very beautiful, played accordion. Uh, but they said, you know, it's all his songs. But when I mentioned, the gentleman I mentioned before, Dennis McGee, who was born in the 20th century, he played with a black accordion player by the name of Amadi Ardouin. And of course, that was 78, and Amadi Ardouin died in the same place that Buddy Bolden died 20 years later unknown grave in Pineville, Louisiana, kind of crazy, he went crazy. Some people said he was playing for a dance and he, the daughter of the person he was staying at gave him a, a, a handkerchief and these white guys got upset and beat him up and all this. But anyway, so this, this, is, a, this is a difference if, uh, I mean, if, if you want to, I mean, it, there's a certain kind of difference in the songs. I mean, you know, when we, we, we played Cajun or where I was playing Cajun, I mean, basically, you know. <laughs> that like a, whatever it would be, Zodic would be more syncopated and maybe a little bit further. Okay, so But it depends who did it. There's a lot of blues. It's like a lot of songs like a... 
Yeah. This is a funny thing too. I mean, it, it, it all involves a lot of stuff. If you were a citizen of Louisiana, and the Spanish people or the French people, if you were a citizen of Louisiana, you had to be Catholic. Okay. So there's not you weren't allowed to play the blues. <laughs> That's crazy. But there's blues in the music. But you weren't allowed to play a straight 16 or 32 bar blues. That's very rare. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Part two on the blues, Southwest Louisiana. Thank y'all very much. Um, make sure to tell everybody um, we've still got more streaming live from Creative Strings Workshop. 10th annual. Every day we've got streams and you can find them at Google Plus, Creative String Players Community. We've got the hashtag Creative String Players on Twitter, Creative String Players on Facebook. Join the community, tweet out about it. we still got a few more days. And uh, for those of you here, um, the rest of the night, enjoy yourself. You can go to the Jazz Jam at Park Street or you can go to the Bluegrass Jam at Dick's Den and uh, make sure you get some rest. Thank <laughs> you.